Hello all. Today we'll be going through a tutorial video to install the key value database Redis in your local Windows machine. To run Redis as a Windows service in your machine and also a bit of Java programming to connect to the Redis database using Java API Redis and further to connect Cassandra Redis and Java together to form a cache based database system. Before we start the installation, let's have a quick look on what Redis is. I'm just clicking the Redis homepage right here. So the Redis homepage gives an overview on what Redis database is. So it comes under the category of NoSQL databases. To be specific, it is classified as a key value pair database. And the Redis home site describes Redis as an in-memory data structure store because it does more than a key value pair using data structures such as strings, hashes, lists, etc. Since Redis is an in-memory database, it is supposed to be super fast in updating and retrieving data and therefore has a multitude of purposes when it is used in business. Our next step will be to download the installer for Windows for Redis version 2.4.6. Clicking the link given right here. The link route out to github.com where you can have the download packages for Redis. This is specifically for Windows. So I'm choosing 2.4.6 for Windows 64 bit. On selecting the URL, you can see that my installer file is downloaded. Now that the installation is complete, let's go ahead and verify the right installation in our machine. I hit Windows menu, all programs. Scroll down all the way down to R for Redis. And as you can see here, I do have a new folder called Redis, a list of files. And the major file which we are going to use today is the Redis client, otherwise also known as Redis CLI. I click the Redis client and it launches a small DOS or Unix kind of window. And as you can see here, the port used by my Redis service is 127.0.0.1 with uh, port ID 6379. We can also confirm the installation by going to C drive, program files, Redis, and this is install folder for Redis. Let's have a quick look at the configuration of Redis. I'm going inside the CONF folder for configuration. You can see there will be a file called as redis.com CONF, which is a main configuration file for Redis. Open that with a notepad. You can see like all the major attributes of the installation is defined in this configuration file, like the port ID, which we had discussed, and many other settings. And as always, since we are new to Redis, I would not recommend to change anything in the configuration file till we are comfortable. Now that the installation of Redis is complete and we have verified the same, let's tie your hands on with some of the commonly used commands in Redis. A complete list of Redis commands is given in the URL here and the introduction to Redis data types is given here. So I'll just give you an overview. So this link gives you the complete list of commands which can be clicked and verified. And here is an introduction to Redis data types and abstraction. As you see here, it's not a plain key value store. It's like more than a key value with many other data structures supported like binary lists, sets, sorted sets, hashes, bit arrays, and more. For our final project, we'll be concentrating more on hashes. As of now, I'll give you some demo on some of the basic commands used in sets and hashes. I'll bring up my Redis CLI and I'll start with the basic set get command. Now the set command is used to set a basic key value pair. I'm use set command, my key will be my key and my value is some value, all in string. So it gave a response of okay, which means it went fine. I'll now try to fetch the value of my key using the get command and it has returned the actual value. Now let's try incrementing and decrementing values of counters. I set a new key called counter with a value of 100. I increment the value of counter using INCR. Now you can see that the value of counter has gone up by 1. I incremented 
again so now it's 102 I can decrement counter as well now let's have a look at the concept of hashes hashes are maps composed of fields associated with values so basically it will have a key like a normal key value pair but the values will be composed of fields and associated sub values I'll show you with an example right here so if you take this example of this map HM set sets the hash map user colon thousand this is the key and this entire set is the value but the value is split up into pairs of username field the value is antirus birth year is another field 1977 is this value verified is another field and one is its value so it's something like fields within fields I'm going to run the hash map set here so it has gone fine and here using hkit I am particularly looking at the value of the field username in the key user thousand so it has return me antirus and here it's get all lists down all the values and the field names so basically username is antirus birth year is 77 verified is 1 since redis is an in-memory database it's quite famous for its fast retrieval and insertion because of that redis is also used as a cache the data is stored in memory for some time and retrieved if it is required in a short while this is well explained in this section redis express keys with limited time to live to start with i'm setting a key named key with a value of some value and i'm using the expire command to set a timeout for this key i'm setting it as 15 seconds so if i see i'm trying to fetch the key now as so the values exist now because the key is still living if I use TTL which is time to live it will show like how long the key will live so in another two seconds the key would expire by now the key would have expired I try retrieving the key again and it gives me nil so basically the key has expired by now using this functionality redis can be used as an effective cache in many enterprise applications all the Redis commands which we have practiced here can also be practiced in an interactive online GUI without any installation. It's called as tryredis.io. I've just brought it up here. So this is the interactive UI. You can type in your Redis commands and test your skills right here. We'll now move on to part two of our exercise today, which is Redis, Cassandra, and Java integration. The aim of our project today is to connect to our Cassandra database, query an existing table in Cassandra, then insert the data which we queried from Cassandra into Redis cache using Java application. By this time, I would assume that you are quite comfortable with Java ID like Eclipse, and you might have also run the tutorial in Cassandra connected to Java. So similarly, we'll need a Cassandra Java API so I have given the link here to Maven repository and also a Redis Java API. They're right here, the Cassandra driver. So you can download the bundle to get the jar file. And the Redis API is called as JDIS and you can download the jar right here. Creating the new Java project and stuff are explained in the document clearly. I'll just skim through the important libraries which are referenced in the project. So I have referenced Cassandra Core, Cassandra Driver DSC, Mapping, GUA, Log4j, Matrix Core, Netty All, SLF4j, and JDS for connection to the Redis. So if you had done your Cassandra database connection with Java, JDS jar is the only one which I have added extra to this project. Let me give a quick overview on the Java code. There are two classes class named product which is a classical class to define a product and the main class which is Redis Cassandra connection and overview on the product classes this product class defines attributes product ID cat category ID product name description price and shipping with the constructor which creates the instance of product with the values passed as arguments 
moving on to the main class redis cassandra connection so i imported all the required libraries here you can see like most of them are basic java io and utility libraries and these are cassandra driver libraries and the last one is for redis moving on to the main function so what the code logic is it gets an input from the user using a buffered reader what we should be inputting is a product id to search in the cassandra database so that gets saved on to br the connection to the cassandra cluster is made it connects to the e-commerce key space it creates a new object for the class product as cache product and here we are doing a query on the cassandra database with the product id which was entered by the user once the cassandra database is queried successfully the value of the product is entered into the object cache product with the corresponding attributes mapped and here we are printing the values obtained from the cassandra database product id name description and price now since we are using redis as a cache assuming that this product should be put into cache we connect to the redis database using jdis once a connection to redis is made successfully we test the connection using the command jdis.ping it should respond with a pong and here we are just testing out the redis database by listing out all the keys in the database using keys space star here we are using a hash map object called pdt hash map where each of the values which was queried from the cassandra database is mapped to a particular key like product id cat id name description price shipping the hash map is used here so that the hm set can be directly used to set the values into redis coming down here the code checks whether the particular key value product colon the product id is existing in redis so if the product is already existing we'll just set the time to live value to 15 again using expire if the product is not there it means it's a new query which was done from cassandra side so we'll need to insert this into redis so the hm set is used to insert the hash map with the key pdt colon product id and the values will be inserted as a hash map with pdt hash map object which we had set here once the value is inserted into redis we try to retrieve the value using hget all the key name is pdt colon product id and then we print the value out using the hash map pdt retrieve hm get product id and product name to make sure that we indeed got the value back from redis and we print all the keys list in the redis server using keys star to make sure that the new key is present moving further on we utilize the ttl command to see how much of time is remaining for that cache object the sleep function is used to reduce the time by 1000 milliseconds or 1 second and the ttl is checked again to ensure that indeed 1 second has been reduced from the time to live for the object in cache which is pdt colon the product id in discussion then we increase the sleep to 15000 milliseconds which is 15 seconds so initially since we had set the expire as 15 seconds by this time the object should have expired with that assumption we print the cache value of the object again using the same key we try to print its product id and product name and then we list all the keys in the ready server again to make sure that the cached object key is deleted i'm just going to run the program and let's see the results right click run as a java application so it is asking me for an input enter the product id to search i input number one so the program is running let's see the results it has fetched the value from the cassandra db product id one with hpnv laptop as the name description price and here it has connected to redis server successfully server is running pong that's what we are expecting when we ping it 
and if you see the current keys list in ready server it has list of keys which i had keyed in personally into my ready server let's look at uh, the key starting with pdt we don't see anything starting with pdt and here since product one is not existing in radius it has created a new entry in radius with key one and this is the key here pdt colon one so that's the new uh, entry into the radius table with key pdt colon one and the value was a hash map and the time to leave for that object was set as 15 so at this point of time it is 15 after one second it was 14 then we gave a sleep of 15 seconds after 15 seconds when we rerun this command to display the object it returned null because it has it has expired and finally we just rerun all the keys list in ready server and if you notice the product one key which was there 15 seconds earlier is missing here for the final project redis can be easily set as a cache by changing its configuration file so i go back to the configuration file conf and open up redis conf the link given the document gives an overview on how redis can be used as an lru cache which stands for less recently used First of all, we need to set the max memory to a finite limit. By default, it will be set with no memory limits. So I go back to the config file and set max memory as 100 MBs for megabytes. And now once we have a finite max memory, we need to also set a max memory policy. So default policy is volatile LRU. That's what uh, I'm going to use mostly. So the uh, details on all the policies is given here. All keys LRU can also be used to make Redis behave as a cache. After saving the config file, you will need to rerun the service to get this into effect. Thank you for watching the video. Hope you have a good experience running this program by yourself.